Mm-hmm. So as far as um, working across um, specialties, for example, we've talked about some comorbidities too. Um, are there any gaps that you've observed maybe in either patient education or um, follow-up or even utilizing some of the data that you got um, from the, the insulin pump while uh, you know delivering the steroids? What is your ideal view of how um, providers would work across specialties to utilize this this new tool. Yeah. So, you know, we right now have seen that there are relatively few people, endocrinologists that are prescribing this for people, mainly because it's not really a part of the training, right? So it wasn't part of my fellowship training. I don't think that really most centers are kind of learning about this. I think part of it is kind of the off-label use, but I think there are other factors there that are in play too. You know, people might view this as, you know, being sort of experimental. You know, why, you know, I've seen so many people that respond to oral hydrocortisone, you know, what's going on here that someone's not doing well, that we have to kind of switch over to this new, newer technology. And so I think some of the unfamiliarity is part of the issue here. Um, but I think that, you know, ultimately, you know, patients are hearing about it. And so right now, the majority of people that I'm switching over to this modality really come to me because they've seen two, three, kind of four endocrinologists. They've all made adjustments either to the frequency, meaning that they're giving, going from two, three, sometimes more times a day in terms of taking the oral dose. Sometimes they're taking the oral suspension. Sometimes they're using more potent, kind of longer lasting steroids like the prednisone or prednisolone. And at the end of the day, it's just not getting the job done. And so I think that people are very motivated to kind of seek out an endocrinologist that will kind of align with them and try out this this technique. Um, I will say that in people that have diabetes, that are giving themselves two, three, four injections a day, moving to an insulin pump is going to make things more convenient for them. But in the case of adrenal insufficiency, if you're taking a tablet twice a day and you're switching over to a pump, that's going to make things a lot less convenient. But so many patients are very eager to kind of take this on, mainly because they've been so symptomatic, you know, despite taking what should be a pretty simple dose of hydrocortisone twice daily. And again, it's just not getting the job done. And so I think that that I don't want to say shows a level of desperation, but really shows that they're incredibly motivated to kind of pursue something different. Interesting. Um, so speaking of adrenal insufficiency, is there any research that you saw at the conference here that you're really excited about that might impact your work in general? Yeah. So I was surprised to see, you know, how many people actually are kind of using this modality now, because I thought that. Again, since it's really not part of the training, since it's sort of off-label, it can be difficult to kind of get disapproved. I thought very few people would be doing it, but we did have people kind of uh, have a show of hands in the beginning of the talk, and I was impressed by how many people in the room really had taken this on. I saw some posters kind of in the expo as well of other people that have really uh, started to use this uh, technique too. Um, so I think that it's catching on. I think that you know patient awareness is increasing as well with some of the other kind of social media things that we're seeing now. And so if you haven't tried it before, I think that people are going to start asking you about it. And, you know, even if it's not something that someone might be comfortable to do, at least having a framework of how to approach these patients, I think it would be very helpful. That sounds great. Um, Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for joining us on MD Newsline. Thank you, Esther. Pleasure's all mine.